Hello and welcome to my Child First podcast channel. I'm your host Divya. I've been a doula and a birth keeper for almost two decades. And all this week, 22nd to the 28th of March 2020, which is the World Doula Week, I will bring you information on doulas. So who is a doula? Doula is a new name for an old role. Traditionally, women in their reproductive journeys were supported by other women. These could have been the wise women of the community or thais, as they are called in many regions in India, an elder aunt, a sister, a friend, or a neighbor. This was especially true for labor and birth. This was true for our culture and other cultures around the world. We can easily say that women were not designed to give birth alone. The word doula itself comes from Greek origins and is often translated as woman's servant. While that may be a literal translation, the word servant doesn't quite encompass it. The more appropriate phrase would be in service of woman, or a simple explanation of what doulas do would be, doulas serve or support women in their reproductive journeys. Doulas can offer support in specific times of reproductive journey and thus can be a pregnancy doula, a birth doula or a postpartum doula. Just as support cannot be clearly defined in tasks and roles, the work parameters are not as clear-cut as the names are. Birth doulas, which I am, for example, begin their association with expecting families as soon as they are approached and hired. Some people look at and engage doulas as soon as they discover they are pregnant. Many begin this search in their second trimester and most in their third trimester. The doula supports the woman from before labor begins, through labor and birth, and into the postpartum period. Thus, a birth doula's role would extend into pregnancy and postpartum period. Also, different doulas define for themselves what kind of a support package would they want to give, how far into pregnancy or before birth they would like to work with, how far into postpartum period would they like to work with, what are their biases and beliefs about birth. Doulas are individuals and therefore have very individual practices. So what kind of support do doulas give? While each of our clients define what they may need as support, we could meet their need in three different ways. Informational support. A doula offers information on what may be happening towards the end of pregnancy, some of the feelings and sensations the mother may be feeling, information about labor and birth, information about hospital routines, information about breastfeeding. Furthermore, she would also assist the parent to refine their expectation of labor and birth. She supports their dialogue with their care provider, helps them to see the lay of the land, discuss possible challenges. She offers evidence-based information for specific issues and most importantly has no bias thus helps the couple to integrate the information and make a choice that is relevant to them. She approaches their questions with good information and a belief that they are competent to make choices that work for them. This boosts the parent's confidence and makes them in charge of their decision. A doula also offers physical support. She is well versed with anatomy and physiology of labor and birth, With this understanding of the process, she can offer suggestions of positions, movements, offer comfort measures of massage. Some doulas add on skills of acupressure, aromatherapy. Basically, she can be the guide on the journey through labor land. And finally, a doula also offers emotional support. This aspect is as misunderstood as it is important. We know Safety is the bedrock of positive birth experience. Humans don't just need physical safety. Emotional safety is just as important. How does one ensure emotional safety? Who makes you feel safe? 
This is not an intellectual question. Since safety is a matter of subjective perception, life experiences and personality. Some elements that support safety, someone who's consistently there, you can depend on. Someone who's open and honest, someone who believes in you and does not judge. And in turn, you can be open and honest and speak your mind. Someone who makes you feel heard. Doulas know the cost of fear and the uncertainty of birth. So the face of this emotional support would be offering information, supporting and facilitating your choice with compassion and care. This nurturing, continuous care adds another layer of safety for the woman and the family. Doulas know that each of their clients are individual people, different from each other, and may have different expectations and circumstances. Doula care is meeting each client's need where they are. So doulas pay attention to what their clients need more than what they know and they can do. Not only do doulas offer informational, physical and emotional support, they also do so providing continuous care throughout the period before you give birth, during your labor birth, and postpartum. This means doulas don't have working hours or shifts. Here's another aspect that I would like to touch upon. A doula can be seen as an advocate. She's an advocate to the parents for the baby as she presents information and options. She's the sounding board of which the couple can bounce their choices and even reasons why they're making those choices. She offers a container to evaluate these choices as parents reflect upon what they need and what the baby needs. She's offering them the baby's perspective. In the natural process of birth, they are both the same, but in individual cases in real life, they may be divergent. Doula then helps to bridge the gap with compassionate presence. The doula may be an advocate for the mother to the family by supporting communication and connection, helping allay fears with information and evidence. Doula makes sure that the mother is heard. The doula may be the advocate for the family by encouraging the woman, partner and family to voice their choices to care providers. She may offer them a list of questions for their care providers. She may help them to evaluate the given answers and come to an idea of what fits and works for them in their current setting. Doula may also bridge the communication gap between care providers and families, giving them much needed pause and tools to process the circumstances and make choices or accept situations. It may also be important at this point to enumerate that what does not lie in the scope of doula work, picking the conversation about advocacy, it is important to remember that doulas will equip and support the client to advocate for themselves and do not speak on behalf of their clients. Furthermore, doulas do not perform any clinical tasks such as vaginal exams, fetal heart monitoring or catching the baby. They never give medical advice or diagnose situations. They might give you some evidence-based research on some values or a test that you may be going through. However, they will not offer you a medical opinion since that's the purview of your medical care provider. They do not make decisions for their clients and they do not take over the role of the family or the partner. And most of all, Doulas never think of themselves as an expert. They believe that women and babies are the experts in birth. To recap, in this podcast, we discussed what doulas do and what is not in their scope of work. That is all for today. Thank you and bye-bye.